Today on Ridge Roamer, another by the numbers American cruiser shootout between the Harley Davidson Softail Standard and the Indian Chief. Thanks for joining me for another By the Numbers episode where we compare two motorcycles solely on specs so you get an unbiased comparison. These two bikes represent the most stripped down, budget friendly, large displacement V-twin American motorcycles available from each manufacturer. They're middleweight, naked cruisers with virtually no frills except for the big V-twin engines stuffed inside their frames. No wind protection, no bags, no highway bars, no floorboards, not even passenger accommodations or anti-lock brakes, though all these items are available as add-ons. Both manufacturers offer similar models with increased levels of trim. The Indian Chief line offers this bike in a dark horse with a bigger 116 cubic inch engine and more tech. The bobber version in both a standard and a dark horse, which has taller bars, shorter, fatter spoked wheels, and forward controls, and the Super Chief and Super Chief Limited, which get a more vintage look with leather bags and windshield standard. Likewise, Harley Davidson offers the Street Bob, which is essentially this bike with the larger 114 cubic inch engine and more standard features two lowrider versions with the small fairing among other upgrades and the heritage classic which goes for that vintage look with leather bags and windshield as well if you want the factory to customize your bike have more power and more features straight off the showroom floor those higher trim models are available some with starting price tags over twenty thousand dollars but if you like a stripped down basic bike or you're looking to make your own modifications for a one-of-a-kind build these are a great place to start, and they both start under $15,000. Let's start at the heart of it with engine and powertrain. Both of these motorcycles offer large, air-cooled V-twin engines, though the Harley does have a standard oil cooler. The Indian uses their Thunderstroke 111, making 108 foot-pounds of torque at 3,200 RPM. While the Harley has the smaller Milwaukee 8107, it makes 110 foot-pounds at only 3,000 RPM. The Harley has slightly higher compression ratio at 10 to 1 versus the Indian's 9.5 to 1 and has four valves per cylinder instead of Indian's two valves per cylinder. Both are fuel injected and use ride-by-wire throttles. Both bikes offer six-speed transmissions, but Indian's primary drive connecting the engine and transmission is gear-driven, where the Harley still uses a chain primary. Transmission gear ratios are very comparable with identical top gear ratios, though Indian's first gear is slightly lower. Both bikes use final belt drive to get power to the rear tire. And when it comes to maintenance, Indian's oil system is single sump, meaning one oil filter and one oil cavity services the engine, transmission, and primary, where on the Harley they still use three separate oil systems. This, along with the Jiffy stand, are a couple of the items I really wish Harley would update. Exhaust is very similar, with both bikes using two into two shotgun style exhaust on the right side of the bike with a crossover pipe just before the mufflers. Now that we've reviewed the powertrain, we can move on to the chassis. The Harley chassis is the new soft tail frame design which started in 2018. The Indian chassis is all new for 2022, accommodating all models in this new Chief line. I personally disagree with the use of the Chief name for this new middleweight platform. Even under the Polaris umbrella, they've already used the Chief name within their heavyweight platform. And it's not just because I dislike reusing model names for completely different platforms. I'm looking at you too, Ford. But because the Chief shouldn't be in the middle of the pack. It should always be at the top of the lineup. It's literally the definition of the word. Anyway, off my soapbox there. The frame itself for Indian is a departure from their typical cast aluminum frames like on the Scout and Heavyweight platforms, utilizing the engine as a structural member. This new Chief frame is very similar to the Harley design, using a traditional 
full tube steel frame with the engine resting inside of it. However, the rear subframe is still cast aluminum. Wheelbase of these two motorcycles is virtually the same at 64 inches for the Indian and 64.2 for the Harley. The overall length of the Indian is a little shorter than the Harley at 90 inches versus 91.3, which is attributed solely to different rear fender styles. Ground clearance of both bikes is 4.9 inches and lean angle is also identical at 28.5 degrees. Rake on the Indian is slightly shorter at 29 degrees versus 30 degrees on the Harley. The Harley soft tail frame utilizes a hidden coilover monoshock providing a clean rear swing arm style and 3.4 inches of travel. Indian went with the exposed dual rear shocks offering 3.0 inches of travel. Both have preload adjustment. The Harley has 49mm telescopic forks with dual rate springs providing 5.1 inches of travel. The Indian uses 46mm telescopic forks with 5.2 inches of travel. Both bikes use mid control pegs for their foot control layout, so ergonomics will be similar though the Harley does come with a taller set of handlebars. Seat height is also similar with the Indian at 26 inches and the Harley at 25.8. Gas tank capacity of the Indian is larger at 4 gallons, which is not a lot for an engine this big, where the Harley offers an even worse 3.5 gallon capacity. Indians very clear about their weight, stating it is 647 pounds with an empty tank and 670 pounds with a full tank. Harley gives their weight as shipped at 642 pounds, then in running order at 655. I've heard somewhere in the manual references in running order as 90% full gas tank. But knowing gas has a weight of just over 6 pounds per gallon, that math doesn't work unless Harley ships their bikes with half a tank of gas. If anyone has more details as to Harley actually measures in running order, please let me know in the comments. But since bikes are typically shipped with oils and no gas and no battery installed, maybe the in-running order is the same as Indian's empty tank weight. Regardless, weight is close. They're going to be within 5 or 10 pounds of each other, one way or the other. These bikes run similar wheel packages, both offering 19-inch front and 16-inch rear cast aluminum wheels, though the Indians are wider and painted black where the Harley is painted silver. Tires are also noticeably wider on the Indian with a 130-60-19 front and 180-65-16 rear versus the Harley's 190-19 and 150-80-16. Of course, the Harley uses their Harley-Davidson branded Dunlops while Indian is fitted with the Pirelli Night Dragons. Brakes are also similar with both bikes using single 300mm front rotors with four piston calipers and a single rear rotor with two piston caliper, though the Harley rotor is a bit smaller on the rear. As I mentioned earlier, both motorcycles come standard without anti-lock brakes, but are also available from the factory with ABS. That's an $819 option on the Harley and $900 on the Indian. Unless you're buying this bike to build into a custom stunt cruiser, opt for the ABS. Both bikes come standard with an LED headlight. They both use standard bullet style turn signals with integrated stop turn tail feature on the rear, but Harley still outfits those four lights with incandescent bulbs where the Indians are standard LED. Gauges are a bit different with the Indian looking more old school on their 4 inch round analog display while Harley integrates a digital display into their handlebar clamp. The Harley gauge is a bit small with only a 2.14 inch viewable area utilizing an LCD display that shows speedometer, gear indicator, odometer, fuel level, clock, trip meter, range, and tack. The Indian's larger 4 inch round display has an analog though electronic dial speedometer with an inset LCD display panel showing odometer, dual trip meters, digital tack, ambient air temperature, fuel gauge, fuel range, average fuel economy, battery voltage, gear position, clock, and any diagnostics. The Indian comes standard with cruise control, which the Harley does not, 
though it can be added as an accessory. The Indian also offers three ride modes, rain, road, and sport. Let's wrap this up now with color options and pricing. For 2022, the Indian is available in three colors, gloss black metallic, matte white smoke, and matte ruby smoke. However, only the black and white are available without ABS, while all three are available if you do want ABS. Pricing can be seen on the chart starting as low as $14,999 for black non-ABS and up to $16,399 for the matte paint options with ABS. Harley simplifies things and offers the soft tail standard in your choice of gloss black, with or without ABS. If you want any color other than gloss black, I'm sure you can find a paint shop that will be happy to customize to your heart's content. The good news is that helps keep the Harley price down at only $13,949 without ABS or $14,768 with. As always, there's going to be additional surcharges, freight, fees, taxes, etc. And what you pay varies widely from dealership to dealership. So you're going to have to talk to your dealership, find out actual out-the-door prices, and compare based on that. I've seen out-the-door differences of $3,000 from dealership to dealership for the same exact new motorcycle. Thank you for joining me on another By the Numbers comparison, but remember, there's always more to the decision than just numbers. Check them out in person to see their style, comfort, quality, handling, and many other subjective qualities to make the right choice for you. How well your local dealership treats you, local hourly service rates, available options, I could go on and on. Both of these bikes have some advantages over the other, so I wish you the best of luck. As long as you end up on two wheels, you made the right choice. <laughs>